What's up guys, it's Tommy here and welcome to a brand new big update of Liverpool's transfer situation because Roma Olavia has chosen Chelsea and Paul Joyce even denied that Liverpool have made a 60 million pound bid which multiple journalists have uh, said earlier today. Let me know guys, what do you think about Liverpool's transfer in the book? Because I think this has been the most embarrassing, pathetic, shambolic transfer in the and uh, Liverpool's background staff has made this an absolute utter epic failure. Liverpool needed uh, two defensive midfielders and a centre-back signing. Basically the whole of last season Liverpool was ran through and uh, we conceded 47 goals in the Premier League. We had awful defensive issues, huge defensive issues, yet the season is already on the way. We are in the middle of August and no defensive signings have been made by Liverpool. No centre-back, no defensive midfielder, none. We just signed attacking midfielders after signing Cody Gakpo in the January transfer window. And the, the, the last summer is on Jurgen Klopp because he thought our midfield was fine. We signed Arthur as a panic buy after having so many injuries in midfield. But this season it's on the owners because they put the people in charge like Jörg Schmatke and Mike Gordon who are in charge of Liverpool's transfers, they have made a pig's ear of this. Roma Olavia has decided to join Chelsea after Liverpool failed to agree a price, a transfer fee with Southampton. We messed Lavia around and we messed Southampton around. We offered 37 million, 43 million and then 45 million penny pinching by FSG, by the owners. And there is no Mike Gordon or, uh, sorry, there is no Michael Edwards or Julian Ward to bail the owners out. Because previously, Liverpool also op op operated on a limited budget, but Mike Gordon was absolutely genius by picking out players who were who were on the verge of becoming world class, who were huge talents, fitting into the Jurgen Klopp system, and we signed so many brilliant players like that. And uh, then Julian Ward left after Michael Edwards left. Uh, Julian Ward was at Le Liverpool for like less than a season. And that's no surprise because it has come out, Paul Joyce has confirmed that Liverpool were offered to sign Enzo Fernandez from River Plate for just 15 million pounds. We turned it down. Jurgen Klopp or Liverpool or whoever was in charge of the transfers turned it down and we were also suggested we should sign Bruno Guimaraes from Lyon before he went to Newcastle. He would have been a perfect midfielder for Liverpool. Liverpool turned it down. Liverpool rejected that idea. When Michael Edwards saw this, he decided to leave. And then Julian Ward also saw that Liverpool behind the scenes is an absolute mess and he didn't want his name to be tarnished by the incompetence of Liverpool's transfer failings, transfer dealings and he left as well and now we are left with Jörg Schmatke and he's a very loud guy, the Wolfsburg fans warned Liverpool fans about him and that's one of the reasons maybe why Liverpool have been so public with our transfer dealings. This is so unlike Liverpool. And uh, Chelsea have a good relationship with uh, with Moises Caicedo because the guy who bought Moises Caicedo from Man City to Southampton is now working at Chelsea. But I believe part of the reason why Moises Caicedo, uh, why, sorry, it was Roma Lavia I'm talking about. So Roma Lavia has a good relationship with Chelsea. Moises Caicedo was just as officially announced as new Chelsea player. So that's done and dusted that transfer. And Roma Lavia is also uh, on the verge of joining Chelsea and no wonder he got fed up of uh, you know Liverpool failing to agree a deal with Southampton for three weeks and I don't understand why because Roma Lavia is one of the biggest talents in his position he's just 19 years old yet he looked like he played in the Premier League for four or five years already at Southampton he was Southampton's best player Liverpool should have signed him for 50 million pounds so this is on FSG as well I want the owners out and hopefully the majority of the Liverpool fans base will wake up to the fact that these owners are not the right owners for Liverpool. They are still trying to operate at a mid-table financial level when all the top clubs, Man City, Chelsea, Man United, even Arsenal, are 
spending huge amounts of money and you have to spend huge amounts of money you have to be big you have to give big wages to players you have to give big signing bonuses to agents otherwise your first choice targets won't come Liverpool missed out on Moises Caicedo and Roma Lavia two days in a row we have been embarrassed by Chelsea and that is unacceptable and I'm so so fed up of this uh, you can't really I mean we can talk about Chelsea how can they get away with this and financial fair play but that doesn't uh, change the fact that Liverpool still don't have a defensive midfielder Liverpool still don't have a centre-back signing all throughout this transfer window and now it will be fascinating on what Liverpool will do this is like what Manchester United have been doing a scattergun approach Liverpool have a lot of money now but not the right people in charge of transfers and that's why we are in such a mess also Paul Joyce is suggesting that uh, Liverpool could turn to Tyler Adams who got relegated with Leeds United and he has a 20 million release clause I mean uh, he would be maybe a little bit of a better signing than Sangari 32 million for Sangari who is 25 Tyler Adams is 24 and FSG keep doing this that they are not willing to overpay for players and that's why we didn't sign Ravia because if Liverpool really wanted Lavia we would have paid the 50 million that Southampton was asking and Lavia that's the that's the most painful thing missing out on Lavia because missing out on Caicedo you know Chelsea have been doing the groundwork on the Caicedo transfer for six months uh, Caicedo was a Chelsea fan for for many years even when he was a youngster but to miss out on Lavia who, who wanted to sign for Liverpool Liverpool was Lavia's first choice and yet because FSG are such stingy bastards we didn't want to pay an addition of four million pounds for Lavia we could have had him for 50 million plus a little bit of add-ons and bonuses but uh, because FSG are such penny pinchers we missed out on Lavia and that's that's unacceptable I think and it's also deeply embarrassing Chelsea spent combined with add-ons 193 million pounds on Caicedo and Lavia and Liverpool still don't have a defensive midfielder so it doesn't change it doesn't matter what Chelsea are spending they actually weakened Liverpool in the process of of strengthening their own squad which is a pretty genius move but Chelsea have like unlimited money they are spending a billion pounds in free transfer windows but because Chelsea saw that nobody is really punishing clubs for breaching financial fair play rules PSG didn't get punished Man City didn't get punished by UEFA Man City didn't get punished still by the Premier League even though they have 115 charges against them so it's a free-for-all it's a wild west when it comes to the transfer window and uh, nobody is punishing Chelsea for doing this so Chelsea thought you know what let's spend the huge amounts of money that we have Liverpool can still sign a the right players because remember both Sadio Mane and Mo Salah weren't Liverpool's first choices and yet they became Liverpool legends and they became so so good at Liverpool so we just need to sign the right kind of players I think Tyler Adams for 20 million or Sangare for 32 million as a more experienced like budget option in the defensive midfield it works and then maybe we could sign one for the future Andre from Fluminense I think we should throw enough money for them to accept our offer uh, sorry Andre from Fluminense who is a really really good player check the Kure of Crystal Palace he would cost around 70 to 80 million so that's why maybe I said sign uh, Tyler Adams for 20 million he has a relegation release close and then you will have enough money left over for the Kure also Fulham's draw Palfinha even though he's a little bit of an older profile like 26 27 years old he would be absolutely a fantastic signing exactly Ducore or Pafinha is exactly the kind of player that Liverpool need and they could become uh, almost as good as, as Caicedo one day hopefully um, but they both would cost 80 to 90 million pounds so Liverpool need to identify either of these players as the next transfer target and we need to absolutely make sure that we sign one of these two players plus either Tyler Adams or Sangari is to if, if, I, if we sign uh, two of these four players I think we will be fine for the new season 
but uh, heads have to roll uh, behind the scenes because Liverpool's the people in charge of Liverpool's recruitment have made an absolute mess of this transfer window and uh, Jurgen Klopp needs and deserves FSG's backing and it is this is on FSG because they put the people in charge of uh, transfer negotiations it's not Jurgen Klopp who, are, who is doing all these transfer negotiations of course after the transfer window is finished and after Liverpool got uh, two or three players in Inacio who has a 40 million pound release close from Sporting he would be also a no-brainer I don't understand why Liverpool at least didn't sign a centre-back if we get all these uh, defensive midfielders rejected the lucky thing is for Liverpool that it's not transfer deadline day we still have two weeks left of the transfer window and Jurgen Klopp wanted uh, absolute world-class players he wanted Mbappe, Haaland, Sancho, Chouameni, Caicedo but the club and the owners FSG wasn't willing to upgrade itself to make it happen. I mean, FSG isn't going to sanction these type of mega transfers with huge wages, with huge bonuses to players, to agents and huge wages because FSG just don't want to support financially this kind of, uh, these kind of deals. And because the owners won't sanction the, the finance of these huge deals that is required because of the competition it is slipping through Liverpool's fingers and that's very worrying that Liverpool are now not on the level of Man City, Man United, Chelsea, Arsenal when it comes to signing big players for big money they are slipping down to the levels of uh, Aston Villa and uh, Tottenham I think Palfinha would be maybe the best choice he's Premier League proven he's in his prime so he can come and straight away start for Liverpool He's the, he has the perfect numbers, the perfect uh, profile. Also, no recent history of recurring injuries. He had a shoulder injury recently, but, th but that's it. Also, Paul Joyce is saying that Kai Lavia's Chelsea preference could be because he feels let down by Liverpool's willingness to ditch him last week and go all in for Caicedo. I mean, we were in the middle of negotiating for Lavia with Southampton and then we completely abandoned that and went all in on Caicedo and Lavia decided I deservedly is upset about that and I fully understand why. Also it's worth noting Michael Edwards didn't want Liverpool to give new contracts to Jordan Henderson and James Milner two years ago or I think uh, last summer and yet they both got contract extensions so Michael Edwards decided to leave and then Julian Ward also when he came in he realized what an absolute mess Liverpool are but getting turned down getting turned down by players uh, for in favor of more money or a more convincing uh, project or a more glamorous lifestyle I mean living in London Lavia is already house hunting in London I'm sure Caicedo and his family we love uh, living in London. That's not embarrassing. What is embarrassing is being so unprepared in the transfer window that you are dragged into a tabloid public like transfer pissing war, pissing match against Chelsea with no real vision or plan how to act. Liverpool are very worryingly reactive and not proactive like before. And that's mainly the reason why Liverpool are in such a match, which we've changed so many of our backroom staff, so many of the people who made Liverpool into a world-class team have left Liverpool and that is showing signs in this summer transfer window. So the problem is a lot deeper than just sacking York Schmatke. He only has two weeks left of his job anyway, but Liverpool needed to, de to uh, employ a much better and a much more experienced sporting director. I mean, our biggest rebuild for the far past five years is overseen by a guy who worked at Wolfsburg, no disrespect, and who is on loan on a three month contract. He's not even a permanent Liverpool employee. And he's in charge of Liverpool's biggest rebuild of the past five years. That's FSG for you. They don't really care about Liverpool Football Club and that's really, really worrying. Also, Paul Joyce is saying that um, Caicedo's camp, his agent and Caicedo himself encouraged Liverpool to 
bid a huge amount of money for his signature to Brighton. So Liverpool tabled a 111 million pound deal. Brighton accepted it, but then Liverpool realized that they had been used and the agent invited and involved Liverpool in the transfer bidding war. So his client, Caicedo, would get a much bigger contract from Liverpool. And I mean, it worked because uh, Chelsea have outbid Liverpool by a massive margin. And it, it feels like a different football club in the transfer market after Michael Edwards. Liverpool are in absolute shambles now and I wonder where do we go from here. We can still sign the right kind of players, Palfinho or Ducure and Sangare or Tyler Adams. Those uh, two players uh, would be my choice. I, I would sign Palfinho and Tyler Adams, uh, but Sangare is also a brilliant player as well. And then Liverpool should sign a centre-back. If we, if we are still talking about the money side of things, Palfinha would cost around 70, 80 million pounds. Then Tyler Adams another 20 million, that's 100 million. Plus Inacio, 140 million. Bob's your uncle and we are ready for the, for the new season. We should have done these transfers weeks ago, but better late than never. It's vitally important what Liverpool do from now on. I really hope that you guys enjoyed this transfer news update video. Let me know what, what do you think in the comments below. Thanks for watching. See you later. Goodbye.